hey y'all welcome back to another video we are going to be doing this really really pretty set you guys this was a freestyle that i did spur of the moment i was actually doing another video before this and i just so happened to look down in my drawer and see that i have not used this not polished acrylic before so without further ado let's go ahead and head it to the video So I was going to make this video a chit chat video however I feel like this video really deserved a full in-depth tutorial on how I got this look so we're just going to start off with what I'm doing right here and I'm taking my sanding band this is a 150 grit sanding band um, that I'm using right here it is on a speed of about 10 to 12 rpms um, or 10 to 12,000 rpms excuse me and I'm going up underneath the tip now I want to say first and foremost that these tips are placed on my um my uh gel my bt art box uh gel press-ons or soft gel tips so if you have not seen that video i will link it above right here for you all so that is why it looks like that i just clipped them down to make them a little shorter so this is not directly on my natural nail however i was able to glue them on and do the pop off method so i will be popping these nails off and i will still have my bt art box um gel press-ons on so this is actually my second time doing this voiceover because I felt like I was just not explaining this the right way, I guess. It's so hard to explain what I'm doing versus you just watching and seeing what I'm doing. But I'm going to try to my best ability to explain to you guys exactly what I'm doing and how to actually get this deep C curve, um, which basically is what a moon, what a moon cut is. It's basically a super, super deep c curve but it's kind of going in a different direction if that makes sense so anyway we are going ahead and like i said i do have my speed on 10 to 12 rpms that's first and foremost that's the speed that i have it on i don't feel like any slower is going to give you um the momentum that you need to make this cut i could be wrong however this is what worked best for me what you see me doing right here is just kind of smoothing out over the tip of the edge after I have done my moon shape or my moon cut. Now, this was, again, my first time actually doing it this way. So this was all an experiment for me as well in a learning process and a learning curve because I did not know really what I was doing. However, I did get the hang of it and they came out really, really pretty. So I did want to tell you all what I did and my method of doing it this way. Um, so I'm taking my sanding band, you guys, and I'm literally, if you place it under your nail, I'm going to try to explain it very thoroughly um, and in a way that you will get it if you are a beginner. So you're going to take your sanding band and you're going to place it directly under your nail so that it, it fits snug under the nail, right? Then you're going to tip your sanding band upwards. You're going to tip your e-file upwards so that your sanding band is pointing downwards, if that makes sense. Then you are slightly going to press up into the tip. What this is doing is creating that curve. It's creating basically the shape of your sanding band. It's going to create it in the nail. So if you're using a 5-in-1 bit or a different type of drill bit, it's going to create that space and that size of a um, dip in the nail or a curve in the nail, if that makes sense. So these were square tips. Um, and the sanding band is what worked best for me, except for the pinky. The pinky I did have a little bit of trouble on, and I'm going to tell you all what I should have done when I got to the pinky versus what I actually did. So as you can see, I'm taking my sanding band and I am just putting it in the crease of, or putting it in the middle of the tip of the tip, if that makes sense. And I'm pushing it upwards and then, um, I'm just putting a little pressure to make the the uh, moon cut a little deeper sorry I'm stuttering y'all I'm trying to I'm talking really fast and trying to still look at the video while I'm explaining this so after I've made all the moon cuts you guys I'm gonna slightly just very very light pressure go over the very tip of the nail just to flatten it out I do not want this part to be thick and when you are putting acrylic on top of it you might sometimes make it a little thicker so i'm just going over it to smooth everything out make sure there's no excess um plastic tip left over and that is just what i'm doing right here and i'm basically cleaning it up 
So another tip is if you want to make the C curve or the moon cut, I'm not gonna let me stop calling it a C curve because this is not what really a C curve is. A C curve is when you place your um, file straight under the tip and you're not really putting it at an angle like this so this is a moon cut or a fish tail whichever one you want to call it um they're the same thing but to make your moon cut deeper you're going to just place it slightly under where you already filed where the moon cut already is and you're going to just keep it directly in the middle of that moon cut if that makes sense you're not really going to hit the sides too much that is going to make it a little deeper if you have to even the sides out then you can go back and do that but just to make it deeper you're going to keep it directly in the center and put some pressure on it to raise the cut so now we're on the pinky and i will say this this was not the type of drill bit that i should have been using for it um, I should have switched to a 5-in-1 bit, which is a little more narrow, and that would have fit directly inside of this tip. As you can see, my sanding band is almost wider than the tip of this nail. So for me to get that real moon cut that I wanted, I would have had to use something a little smaller. Now, I did end up getting the hang of it, and I was able to do it with my sanding band. However, it was a task. It was harder. I made it way harder on myself than it had to be. And also, I was trimming away too much of the tip. I did, I trimmed away too much of the tip because I had to get the perfect shape and it took me a while to get the perfect shape because it was trimming off so much at one time, being that the sanding band is so thick and so wide. So um, that is just one con that I had and one thing that I would change as of right now. I would definitely have used a different drill bit on my pinky just because that tip was the smallest out of them all and my sanding band did not fit in the center of it. I really, really hope that I'm explaining this to the best of my ability and for you all to understand it. If you have any like more in-depth questions, please, please, please comment down below and I will um, try to get back to you as fast as I can to explain it to you. But hopefully I explained it good enough um, for you all to follow along and hopefully I showed enough in the video in real time to give you um, a real in-depth look at what I did to get that look. I did also want to mention that there are two completely different ways in how to get this shape or this moon cut. One of the ways is by Claws by Carmen. I know y'all follow her on Instagram. She does have a few videos actually up here on um, YouTube, but not too many to actually, you know, follow along and what she's doing. But she always, always, always posts nails like this, like blinged out, moon cut, um, real Swarovski crystals, so on and so forth. Uh, we are going to be using A76 Nails Monomer, and we're also going to be using Not Polish, uh, Throwing Jade, and a, two other colors by Not Polish today. So back to what I was saying, you guys. I um, Isn't this a beautiful color? I had to show y'all really one more time in the screen. But um, like I was saying, uh, Claws by Carmen, she, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, she actually puts her acrylic on regular tips if i'm not mistaken and she does not pre-shape them in this manner she doesn't do the moon cut first she'll place her acrylic down on a regular square tip i believe do correct me if i'm wrong but i, I think i've seen her do it this way um and then after she is done with all of the application she goes back in and takes her, her sanding band or whatever um, drill bit that she's using and she actually makes the c curve or i'm sorry makes the moon cut um, after she is done applying the acrylic powder now this is something that i used to do however it never came out how deep her moon cut came out and i was like what am i doing wrong like i have to be doing something wrong y'all so i also follow someone by the name of nails by c or nails by Sai. i'm really not sure how to pronounce her name because of um the way that i spelled it has two y's i believe um so it might be short for something but please i'm so sorry if i'm pronouncing your name wrong you already know how it go when i pronounce people name wrong i get backlash for it <laughs> But um, yeah, she does it this way. She actually pre-shapes her tips first 
and then she goes ahead and um she applies the acrylic powder which i think is genius and i really um applaud her for all the sets that she's done like it really inspired me to go out on a limb and or a whim and try to um actually achieve that look because i've been wanting to achieve it for so long just looking at claws by carmen and i could never really get it but to see how she did it and to see how she um does her her uh, moon shape prior to acrylic i was like duh you know like why didn't i think of that so kudos to you girl thank you for putting me on i'm gonna be doing that from now on and it really worked out for me so kudos thank you thank you thank you because they came out so cute at least i think they came out really cute you guys um and it was so much easier so much easier the shape was already there so really when you put the acrylic down you're just making it more defined once you have to go back and shape it so i just find that this method is a lot easier than placing your acrylic down first and then having to go back and really make that deep um, c-curve shape when you have layers and layers of acrylic powder already on the nail so that is what works for me do it however you feel is necessary do whatever is easiest for you um obviously if you're watching this tutorial you're probably going to go ahead with this method so um i feel like this is the easier way of doing things so as I'm doing this voiceover, Jen just asked me a question on my community post. Hey, Jen, I'm going to screenshot your question right here for everyone. So Jen asks, what's the best thing that, that has come out of being an influencer and what is the worst? So I'm probably going to have to split this question up a little bit because when we get to the other nail, the next nail, I'm going to have to explain to y'all about this application because it was so fire that I just have to stop everything I'm talking about and everything that I'm doing and just go into detail about it. But I will answer the end of that question or the second part of that question really quickly because it's just um, something that can be summed up in a nutshell. The worst thing that I feel about becoming an influencer, which I don't even see myself as an influencer right here right now just because I don't have a huge following and this is just something I do for fun this is really fun to me I enjoy doing it so it's not really I don't feel like I'm an influencer or um, I just feel like I'm a content creator I create content for people that like to watch nails <laughs> but um the worst thing I would say is definitely drama like you have to be aware of like even making friends out here, I guess, like that's a thing. And yeah, that's probably the only thing that I can say bad so far that has came out of this process with me being on YouTube and just getting to know other people or getting to know, you know, some fake people or people who act fake. And I, oh. But anyways, let's get into this not polished acrylic. First of all, this application right here, should I explain what I'm doing really quickly just to let y'all know? What I did right there was I was pushing the acrylic up because I did not want it to fall on the sides of the nail. So I was pushing it up on either side to get it in the center of the nail until it became a little more stiff, stiff enough for me to drag that bead all the way down to the edge of the nail. That is what I was doing if you are new to acrylic or um, just don't know how to really control your acrylic. And the reason why I'm wiggling it on the nail like that and letting it kind of sit where it's at for a minute before I lift off before I lift my brush off of the acrylic is because I do not want my acrylic to run to the side or off the nail I am keeping it in one position until it kind of stiffens up and fully polymerizes um, on the nail so that is what I'm doing right there if you have ever seen um, nail techs do that that is what they're doing they're kind of just letting it sit for a second and letting it stiff up so that they can pull it down without basically making a mess or basically having their acrylic go each and every way or spilling over to the sides. so yeah, I just had a hit on that because the application of this nail was absolutely beautiful. So the other thing that Jen asked was, what's the best thing that has come out of being an influencer? Um, I'll say what's the best thing that has come out of me being a content creator. I feel like an influencer is someone who has a wide 
um, audience, like a huge audience, and they really influence people to do like like anything they do, you're gonna do. Like I'm talking Jackie Ina, um, Beyonce. Those are influencers, celebrity influencers. Those are the people who I feel like you're gonna look at them and you're gonna literally see stuff that they do and want to do it. I don't know if I'm that big yet. I am not that big yet. So I don't. I really don't consider myself an influencer. I just consider myself a small YouTuber who create con who creates content but to answer the question honestly like so much for me as a small content creator has come from this like I can I can literally come out with something if I was into that like I could come out with a candle business I could come out with a clothing business and now I have an audience to really project that onto if that makes sense before I had you know Facebook Instagram I would have to start literally from the ground up promoting my stuff to a wider audience but now I have that audience like I have that audience that you know, knows me, I have that audience that knows if I'm going to be selling something, you know, they trust me enough to sell them a good product. So they will most likely buy from me. So that's one good thing. I feel like that's huge for people to get on this type of platform or any type of platform. And they plan to do or they know that they're going to venture off and do another business or even if they don't know, that is something that comes from being a content creator that I am so grateful for. Because who's to say that I'm always going to be able to do nails, you know, something may happen with my wrist, knock on wood, God forbid, but something may happen to my wrist where I can't do nails anymore. I could always, you know, start to venture off and create some type of different content or maybe venture out and do something else. Whereas, um, or where I would, I could actually already have an audience that is following me and they would, you know, be there to to follow me onto that journey or into that journey of doing something else other than nails. So that's one good thing. Also, I mean, who doesn't like free products? Like, let's be honest and real. Let's keep it a buck here. Like, let's keep it real. Who doesn't like free nail products? Like getting free nail products was like when I first started last year, I was like, I cannot believe companies are really sending me free products. Like that's crazy. But I mean, no big product had, I mean, no big product, no big brand yet has reached out to me to actually send me um, any products. I've had like, you know, nail polish from Madam Glam, um, BT Art Box, obviously, you know, just small brands, small, probably YouTube um, brands or Amazon brands, I mean, reach out to me. Um, I clearly have not had not polished McCart here or sky big brands like that have not reached out to me yet but those are just things that you look forward to you know what I'm saying like those I don't feel like you should start a channel and have your mind programmed to oh I'm starting this channel because I want this brand to reach out to me or because I really like this product I I'm doing this because I want to work with this brand or get free stuff from this brand. I don't feel like that's the mindset you should have when creating a channel, whether or not it's nails or, or whatever the case may be, or any content creating that you're doing. I feel like it should be something that you truly like to do, or it's just not going to flow. It's not going to feel organic to your subscribers or to your followers. People can tell whether or not you're being real with them. People can tell if you're just like, here to get money people can tell if you're just here for clout people can tell if people can tell if you're a genuine person like like people you think that you don't know you think that people don't know but people know if you're a genuine person at least I do I can tell if you are really a genuine person even if it takes me a while to find out whether or not you're phony or gen or a genuine person I can tell even some of you know people pick up on some of the things that you say in videos or TikToks or whatever the case may be people figure you out so always come into it with a genuine mindset um 
just be yourself be authentic don't come in this thinking oh i can't wait to get a check from youtube oh um i can't wait to get free products like that was never my intentions when i started doing youtube now when it started happening i was like oh hell yeah like this is lit this is really lit that i'm able to literally make content for fun and still have people reach out to me because they see my videos and what I do and my personality, my personality, and they respect that and they like it and they, they want me to make content for them. Like I, I feel like that's such a blessing and it's so dope for me to even have this opportunity to do that. Like whether or not I have 4,000 subscribers or whether or not I have 40,000 subscribers, I just feel like what a blessing it is for me to literally be doing something that I love to do something that's new to me because you guys I've only been doing nails for a year now it's literally only been a year it just hit I don't even yeah it just hit a year like it's just it's crazy so that's one of the big things I could go on and on you guys like I could go on and on about the pros and the cons of this business but the pros definitely outweigh the cons for me and um yeah i just overall really really am happy with what i'm doing right now i'm happy with all of my subscribers um y'all really make this fun for me just talking to you guys like i literally talk to y'all like i've known y'all for years for real for real like y'all hit me up on my instagram so much and i really feel like i know them and it's so funny because i talked to my wife about y'all so that's why if y'all saw um me and her in the video i think we went live the other day yeah we went live the other day and she was like so do you have favorites and i'm like because she knows y'all like she's heard y'all names before and um and i'm like no i really don't have favorites like i have people that i talk to a lot but i don't really have favorites um i can't say that i have like a favorite subscriber because everybody has their own thing with them that i like about them and if I don't like you, then I don't talk to you. <laughs> but no, like I really like everybody who follows me. I like I genuinely like. And obviously, if I don't like somebody, I there is just a block away. Like I can simply block anybody who I don't like. So everybody who is on my channel now is genuine, or at least I would hope that you would be genuine to me. And yeah. So back to the nails, um, I wanted to say this in the beginning of the video, if my nails look a little wider than what they normally are, then I'm sorry for that. It's because I have on the BT Art Box um, gel tips and they are, you know, they made my nails a little more wider because there is an actual gel and tip underneath this false nail right here. So um, that is as slim and and narrow as i could get my nails today but i still think that they came out cute y'all let me know down below if they look okay so we're gonna be using some more not polish acrylics and this one is wicked mind and we're also using yellow mamba now wicked mind is um one that i got out of the mystery boxes i don't know if they just don't sell enough or maybe because it marbles there is a lot of pigment in this so that's probably why it marbles um, but I don't know if that's why they gave it away in the mystery box. However, I decided to still use it. I love this color. I actually have a color just like this um, from Chisel. It's literally the same exact thing. Um, Chisel Neon number four, I believe, is a complete dupe for the not polished Wicked Mine. Um, so anyway, and I'm also using Yellow Mamba, which I got from a... Uh, I think that was from Andrea up here. She gave that to me in a, uh, not a mystery box. What is the word that I'm looking for y'all? Um, a giveaway box. <laughs> she had a giveaway and I won her giveaway. I never win giveaways. So that was really surprising for me. Like I literally never win a giveaway lottery, nothing like that. I just don't have the best of luck. So I feel like in order for me to really give you an in-depth tutorial on acrylic 3D flowers, I will have to do a complete separate video because I did not have um, my powder and my liquid in the video for you all to see and for me to really explain like what I'm doing as far as how I'm getting the beads to ombre. Um, 
or how I'm getting the petals to ombre, uh, how much liquid I'm picking up, how much liquid I'm dapping out um, or draining out. So I'm just going to show you a few acrylic flowers just so this video is not entirely too long because I did do a lot of them. But I'm just going to show you one or two of the flowers and you can kind of get a gist of how I lay them. But I'm not going to keep the complete um tutorial of how i did these 3d flowers if you would like to see a video on how i do my 3d flowers please let me know down below in the comment section and maybe i will make that um video tomorrow and post it for you all if you want to see something in depth like that because i really honestly just got the hang of it and i'm finally figuring out how to make really flattering petals y'all when i tell y'all i used to make the ugliest when i say the ugliest petals ever known to mankind like i it was just not my strong suit i didn't really i didn't know what i was doing like i i don't know what it was that i was doing wrong i really feel like when you push in the petal part like okay let me wait until we get back on the part so right here well, this one has to polymerize a little bit more. So you see where I'm pressing down? You want to go more so to the beginning of the petal. So where the stud is, where the rhinestone is, that part of the petal, you should be pressing down very, very flat, almost to where you see the green acrylic powder. And then as the petal goes upwards, like as you get further to the edge of the petal, that's where it should be a little more dense and have a little more acrylic powder. I hope that makes sense. Like that's what makes the petals look realistic is when they're kind of um, like fading into nothing, if that makes sense. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> y'all see this is why i'm not a, i'm not an influencer i'm just a person who creates content because half the time i can barely explain what the hell i'm doing to y'all so i'm gonna try to explain this once once again so we're gonna wait until we get to another pedal and then i'm gonna just go into detail for y'all okay so right here let's check the pedal out because these petals actually came out really really cute so first and foremost, when you're working with 3D flowers, you want to make sure that your beads are pretty close to being stiff. Like you do not want runny beads or your petals are not going to come out the way you want them to. This is why a lot of people put acetone in their monomer so that the bead will stiffen up quicker so that they can kind of mold it. If your beads are runny, you are not going to be able to mold them. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of just shaping it and pressing it down to feather it out. You want the best brush. Like that's why I said I need to make a whole completely different video so that I can really go into detail because the the brush that you use matters. Um, the acrylic powder that you use matters. There are certain acrylic powders like people use speed acrylic powder for 3D flowers because it dries and sets so fast. That is key to getting a really good 3D flower. You do not want anything that is taking too long to set because the um, bead will keep polymerizing and it will puff back up. I don't know if you know what that means, but the bead will literally, you'll press it down and it will puff back up and all the indentions or the line work that you did in the nail will completely disappear. That's called when your acrylic levels out. Um, that's what it's doing. It's, it's basically popping back up and filling in all the indents or whatever impression that you gave it, it's going to just completely um, go away. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just laying the petal down. I'm letting it sit for a minute. If I need to add a little bit more to it, because I don't want that petal to be too thin, I will add a little bit more acrylic and then I'm going to press it down from the middle all the way to the edges. And when I get to the edges, I'm going to press all around the petal, if that makes sense. And that is going to kind of flare the petal out or um, make it a little wider around the sides. So again, pressing it down in the middle and then I'm going to press side to side all around to flare the petal out. And that's how you that's how you make a realistic looking petal. You always want to make sure that in the middle of your petal, in the middle towards the center, you want to make sure that that is as thin as possible. And then towards the edge of the petal is where you want it to be a little more acrylic than in the center. Um, you want that to that just gives it a more realistic look. If you ever look at a real 
little flower when it gets towards the center like where the seeds or whatever that is in the middle of the flower it's a little thinner than it is on the edges so that's why we do that and it, it just makes it it gives it a more realistic feel so i hope i explained that decent enough um I'll have obviously if I do a whole video on 3D flowers, I will have a lot more time to explain it and I won't have to rush through the voiceover, but this is sped up. So I am kind of like rushing through trying to explain it to you all. So that's probably why um, it's all, you know, kind of all over the place. But hopefully that explained it a little bit for you to kind of get the gist of what to do. Um, but first and foremost, get a really good uh, 3D brush. I have everything, you guys. I have everything linked in my Amazon storefront. Everything that I use is literally linked in my Amazon storefront. If there is something that you cannot find in my Amazon storefront, please let me know. Um, and I will try to go find it for you all and put it in there. I do need to update it. I feel like there's a few things that, um, a few more things that I need to add to my Amazon storefront for you all um just to give it a little update and but yeah everything everything that I use is in there you guys like and that's linked in my description box below it's always linked it's always at the top so you'll always see my Amazon storefront is always available to you all so to end this video off I'm going to tell y'all a little story time and it has nothing to do with nails but as y'all can see in the picture she asked for a juicy story time or just something juicy and I was like what in my life has been super juicy and that I have told everyone the story and y'all this is like a super juicy story okay so hold your panties okay so before we start the story, I just want to let y'all know that the rest of this video is pretty much just going to be 3D flowers finishing off. And then I'm going to go in between all of the three, all of the 3D flowers with some iGel Beauty top coat, which is a glossy top coat. And then at the end, you're going to see me do something to the flowers. And all I'm doing is I'm putting matte coat on the flowers that I might have hit with a gloss top coat because I do not want my flowers to be glossy. I want them to stay matte and I want them to stay um just looking very 3d and realistic i do not want them glossy at all so anything that i accidentally hit with glossy top coat i am going to go over the petals with a small tiny tiny liner brush and some matte gel polish and i'm going to cure all of that in the lamp just so i can get the um, petals back matte to how they were before i accidentally hit it with the gloss top coat so i just want to clear that up because i might be talking over that part and not be able to explain it when we get there so let me bring y'all back to the very, very beginning so that you get the the real tea on this whole entire story and y'all really understand it, okay? So there are about three different parties involved in this story, okay? So <laughs> this is so funny, like this is so funny this was clearly way before my wife way before any of that so i had an ex that i used to date and i'm just gonna name i'm not even gonna name these people i'm just gonna tell y'all the ex in and one girl and another girl okay and me so i had an ex that i used to date way way back like 19 years old okay way over over 10 years ago so um so yeah i had an ex that i used to date and um we broke up years pass we end up dating again okay this is like when i first had my son so that was almost nine years ago um so we end up dating again a few years later whatever 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 and um clearly i'm not with my baby daddy so he is he's oh he was always he passed so he was always a player okay always a player and i told everybody this story i think i even told my wife this story i'm pretty sure i have so he was always a dog always a player but you know i thought that he had changed or whatever but he ain't changed y'all so we're dating or whatever you know he's over my house me him the kid blah 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 I find out, I don't even know how I found out y'all, but I find out that he's also dating 
another girl who I just so happened to have went to school with before. So I knew the girl that he was dating. Okay. I knew the girl that he was dating. So me and her have this whole feud, like hate each other at one point because of this, this nonsense. Mind you, this nonsense only went on for a couple months, if that, maybe a couple weeks and I cut it off because at that point in my life, I just didn't have time for the nonsense. Like I was a little petty, but I wasn't as petty as I was before my child. Okay. So I let it go on for a couple months. I mean, we're to the point where me and and the boy are like literally about to get married he pulls out says that he doesn't want to because of the other girl mind you I don't know that he's dating the girl so all of it made sense after the fact so I finally find out that they're dating or whatever mind you he's still dating me so he's dating both of us at the same time find that out hit her up we're you know spilling the tea back and forth like she's still messing with him I'm still messing with him like it's a whole thing it's like a battle to win this boy okay so dumb so dumb y'all please do not do this do not do this at home because this is the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life even going back to somebody after they have like shit on you before is dumb so don't ever retract don't you ever for a second backtrack in life if you leave somebody in the past keep them there keep them in the past because or else you're gonna go through this mess that I went through So fast forward, maybe a few weeks, I find out I'm at home with, with, um, my, I'm at home with my son and I'm at my Nana's house. Mind you, this was years ago, way before my Nana passed. So I'm at my Nana's house. I'm sitting on the couch and another girl hits me up y'all out of the blue. Another girl, mind you, I know this girl too. So Everybody involved, I know. I have previously known. I knew them for years. So the other girl that hits me up is somebody that I used to live with. Like, that's how much we knew each other. I I had my first apartment with her, okay? So she hits me up and she asks me like the dumbest question anybody has ever asked me before. And she's like, would you be basically like, would I be okay with her dating my ex? And I'm just like, because at this point in time, we have broken up. So this is fast forward a a few weeks or whatever. And I found out that he was messing with the other girl. So I ended up calling it off, you know. But I'm still in cahoots with the other girl because I let it go. And I just let her have him. So after we finish all the arguing. So um, I hope y'all are following along. So, um, (laughs) So the other girl hits me up and she's like, basically asking me for permission to date my ex knowing that that's my ex and you know how you have that one ex that everybody knew that y'all dated and everybody was rooting for y'all to get back together like the whole city knew okay so everybody knew that that was my ex you know it was that type of relationship and it was very like publicized and so everybody knew everything over the years with us so everybody knew that I dated him So if you were my friend, those things, like even if you were a close associate, I just feel like that's something that you don't do. Like you don't date your associate, like close associate or your friend's ex. Like you just don't do that. It's girl code. So for her to call me, mind you, she had enough sense and and she knew me enough to call me. And I guess she thought that she was giving me the respect to ask me if she could date him or not. But I'm just on the phone and I'm looking and I'm thinking to myself, I didn't say it, but I'm thinking to myself, are you fucking kidding me? Like, is this real? Like, are you really asking me if you you want me to give you permission to date my ex, basically? Mind y'all, I did not know that they had already been messing around. So she's really asking me, I don't even know what for. Like, what was the point? Like, you already been messing with him. So at this point, just keep doing what you do and keep me in the dark because I I really didn't need to know any of that, to be honest. So she tells me, and while she's on the phone, I call, I'm, I'm messy Marvin, okay? So I call the other girl, the initial girl who I used to go to school with, right? We went to medical school together. I call her and I tell her the T. I tell her that because she's still messing with she's still messing with my ex. So if she's still messing with my ex, and then I got this girl on the phone who's saying that she's she wants permission to to talk to my ex, which clearly they're already doing, or you wouldn't be asking me. I call 
the other girl who I used to go to school with and I'm like mm, so and so um is on the phone with me right now like I had them both on the phone at the same time y'all I played it so good like I had the other girl on the phone and I told her I said so and so is messing with someone with with you know the ex and she's like huh like I was literally just at his house and da, 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 da. mind you, the other girl who I went to school with lives an hour away, or at least she used to. She lives an hour away from the ex. So I tell her, I find out while I'm on the phone with everybody, you know, I'm on the phone with, with, with girl number one and girl number two. While I'm on the phone, I, I notice that the girl is still talking to me, the one who I used to live with. And she's telling me basically that the ex is over her house right now like in his drawers in the bed over her house right now so me being miss petty betty me being messy marvin or what they call what they call me up here um messy pants what does she call me i can't i can't remember but anyway me being messy i extend you know the little tea to uh the hour away girl and i tell her you know he's at this house and i have the girl's um address so, you know, if you want to do a pop up, you could. Y'all, why this girl drive an hour and a half away? I'm on the phone the entire time that she is driving to this girl's house to catch him in his draws. She drives to his house. She gets there and I hear everything. She had me on the phone the entire time, y'all. Meanwhile, y'all have to picture me. I'm literally laying on my Nana's couch, eating a steak with potatoes, with crab legs and corn, just enjoying this. Like I'm soaking it up because shame on you, Miss Boots, for even, oh, that's what she called me, Messy Boots. Shame on you for even having the audacity to call me and ask could you mess with my ex like girl what no you can't but since you are let's make it even more messy i'm gonna call his current girlfriend on you and tell her where y'all are right now mind you the girl that had the boy over the house the girl that had the ex over the house at that time did not know that the other girl that I used to go to school with did not know that she was on her way to her house and the only reason that I knew where um she lived is because she lived a few doors down from uh from my ex so I think I'm pretty sure that I had her address because y'all know I've been selling um I've been selling jars and desserts for years. So I already had her address. So I give her address to the girl. She gets there. She I y'all, I cannot make this up. I hear her knocking on the door. She knocks on the door and guess who comes to the door to answer it? The girl, right? Guess who comes behind her? The ex. Guess how he's looking? Literally just waking up in his drawers. Mind you, this is not the girl. The girl's house that he's in is not his girlfriend. The girl who's knocking on the door is his girlfriend. Y'all, when I tell you I had the time of my life listening to all the arguing and everything, and I was just sitting back eating my corn on the cob, like no care in the world because it wasn't me. I wasn't in this mess, but I've been told the other girl, I told the other girl who drew, who drove the hour and a half away, I've been told her, leave him alone. Like he is no good for you. Like it's not worth it. She never listened. She finally ended up listening and she's super happy in a relationship now. And then the other girl, she's to shit. I blocked her because first of all, you're freaking weird for even asking me something like that and think that it was okay to date my ex in the first place so boohoo to you I'm glad you got caught up and yeah but rest in peace to my ex because he did pass away and you know he's always been like that and if he was here today he would laugh at this story because he's just a, he was always a jokester and stuff like this did not bother him he really could not give a fuck less so anyways you guys i hope y'all enjoy that story time and i hope you guys enjoy this set and i will see you on the next video i love y'all so much and yeah i'll see you on the next video Mwah. bye